Hello everyone. Uh, 这是曹博士 AI Web 三的创始人。那今天有幸邀请到一位也会讲中文的，大家打个招呼。大家好，<笑>我是 T 波，是在 b i f r o s t 的团队。你好。OK, great.、Uh, speak in English. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. <笑> That's OK. Uh, OK, so T 波，呃呃， can you please briefly introduce yourself and the, the project? Sure. Yes,、yeah, so I'm I'm Tibo. I'm Swiss. I've been based in China, sort of Shanghai and Shenzhen, since、uh, 2019. Joined Bifrost in late 2021. I head sort of strategy, BD, and and sort of help with the foundation as well. For those who don't know, Bifrost is a dedicated liquid staking app chain, leveraging off the Polkadot SDK. And yeah, I'm I'm here today in Singapore for Polkadot Decoded Asia, and we'll be at、uh, Token 2049. Oh, that's wonderful. How is the trip to here? Yeah, it's been good. You know, not too far, not too far from Shenzhen,、That's、and、uh, yeah, it's always good to be here. You know, it's、uh, probably the busiest event conference in Asia.、Mm -hmm. um, there's obviously some in Hong Kong, but this is still the biggest. There's what, like 800 side events and stuff like that.、Mm -hmm. So it's good to be here. And I think for us,、uh, we're here with the team, try and sort of meet our partners, engage with different、uh, teams as well. And yeah, we look forward to this week. Is this the first time you come to Singapore? No, no, I've been here many times actually, many times.、Right. I mean, I've been coming for the last three years for Bifrost at, at Token 2049, and then before when I was working in TradFi,、mm -hmm. um, I used to come here a lot as well for for meetings and and so forth. There's a lot of capital in in Singapore. Hong Kong and Singapore are like the obviously the financial hubs of of Asia. So I've been here many times. Yeah. Wow, that's nice. Yeah. And so, what do you think、uh, the country or city、uh, can be the center of、uh, of Web3 in the future? Yeah, it's a difficult one.、Um, I think that you need to find a bit of a mix, right? You need to find、mm -hmm. a place where you've got、uh, obviously intellectual capital, so builders, right,、mm -hmm. developers, and then you need to have a place where there's capital as well, right?、Mm -hmm. So、um, obviously, I think currently there's a lot of a, of a disparity around where people are building and where sort of the the intellectual capital is, and where the capital is. So I mean, in the U.S., for example, you've got New York, where there's obviously builders, but a lot of like tradfi capital,、uh, a lot of money. It's still sort of the Financial capital of the world,、mm -hmm. and then you've got SF, where you obviously have a lot of the venture,、um, mm -hmm. but that obviously is in America, and we'll have to see with the presidential election and what happens with their policy. On the Asia front, I'm I'm relatively bullish with I think Hong Kong, you know, because Hong、mm -hmm. Kong is obviously close to China with Shenzhen,、right. yeah,、um, the Greater Bay Area,、um, a lot of of the the guys there building are obviously coming to Hong Kong as well. I think there's a bit more leniency, and there's a lot of capital. So I, I'm actually quite bullish on on the Hong Kong area. Uh, in Greater Bay. That's nice. That's nice.、Uh, so if you have the opportunity to have a cup of coffee with a big guy in Web three, who would be the guy? So look, I mean, there's obviously a lot of guys out there.、Um, I actually prefer speaking to guys who are less academic and who are a bit more pragmatic. So I think one guy I'd actually really like to sit down with and have a coffee with would be Pacman from、uh, Blur and Blast. Oh, nice. I'd like to have a. I mean, I, I'll tell you why though.、Um, Firstly, because he's obviously a young guy, grew up in the U.S. Y Combinator,、uh, Blur was obviously a, a pretty big,、uh, you know, project in terms of like how it sort of shifted the NFT space.、Mm -hmm. And let's not forget, Blast was obviously the first sort of leader in the whole points program.、Mm -hmm. And I think he's he's got a very he's a very smart guy in terms of gamifying game theory, ponsonomics, and and the point system. He understands the psychology of like users、mm -hmm. and the game. So I'm actually quite bullish on 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 sort of how he's contributed, you know, massively to the space. And I think now with Blast, they've obviously seen a a pretty big like shift in terms of TVL. A lot of a lot of builders have left as well. Right. But I think there there's a focus on 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 mobile. So、mm -hmm. I think we'll see a shift there. So I think he's he's on a lot of trends and leading a lot of narratives. And, and I, I would be pretty interested in sitting down sitting down with the guy,、nice. and hearing his thoughts. Yeah. Nice. That's great. And、um, so next question: What are Mm, your most varied、um, blockchain application? Bifrost, man. Bifrost, okay. Simple, <laughs> simple, man. Simple, simple, okay. Simple, honestly. Yeah, okay. Don't get me killed, man. <laughs> It's Bifrost,、Enough. man. Okay.、Uh, so if you are so lucky、uh, in Pakistan, Korea, Asia, and、uh, someone just drop ten ten dot token, you you get it for free. What are you going to do with them? Liquid stake it on Bifrost. V dot. Simple. Is APY good? Very good. Competitive APY, interesting use cases. Liquid stake it, you know, dollar cost average it via hydration, buy some other maybe some some stables or some some meme coins, you know.、Mm -hmm. But I think overall, I think liquid staking, specifically in this market and where dot price is right now, I would basically just, you know, put that to the side, accumulate passive yield, competitive yield, and and just sort of wait. 
And I, and I would also say that there's obviously some interesting things happening uh, soon, right? With hydration mm. and, 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 and Bifrost as well. So I think, yeah, that's probably what I would do with my dog. So can you tell a little bit about the latest development uh, about Bifrost? Any kind of a big updates were coming and uh, sure and we can we can try or excited about yeah i mean look let's not forget like historically speaking you know bifrost we've been sort of in the scene since 2020 right mm -hmm. we've been sort of pushing the liquid staking narrative since then when liquid right. staking wasn't hot right right it was on ethereum no one was talking about it and i think we were doing the crowd loans which was quite innovative regarding its mm -hmm. mechanism and and liquid staking i think liquid staking now after the the merge is obviously clear it's the biggest sector in DeFi. So in, in our, on, our, on our side, I think what's interesting now with what we've seen with the DeFi renaissance with Aave, Uni, and so forth, there's revenue accrual. Mm -hmm. you know, these, right. these protocols are, are spitting cash flow mm -hmm. and Bifrost is spitting cash flow. We're still relatively small you know, in comparison to other DeFi protocols like the likes of Aave or, or, and so forth. Mm -hmm. But we have a significant amount of money which is being accumulated by the protocol. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing now with our upgrade in tokenomics, we mm -hmm. are basically resharing that revenue to token holders Mm. via you know the B bnc 2.0 sort of upgrade and oh, bbnc right. sort of the, the v lock model mm -hmm. but you lock your basically your your liquid stake bnc and mm -hmm. you basically receive um you know revenue from the protocol that's nice. particularly i think important and then i think from a, a use cases and sort of the the roadmap of bifrost i think what you need to understand is we're, we're pretty chain agnostic mm -hmm. which means that we're leveraging off the polka dot sdk in terms of our value offering Mm -hmm. But we are agnostic in the sense that we can deploy on other chains in terms of our, our palette and that can mm -hmm. communicate with our main chain in terms of issuing uh, the LSTs. Mm -hmm. So in terms of our deployments now is we're working closely with Snowbridge and, and mm -hmm. other interoperability protocols like uh, Hyperbridge and you know, Layer Zero. Oh, that's nice. Where we can basically you know, integrate these other blockchains mm -hmm. you know, natively into their ecosystem and they can commun communicate you know, with Bifrost. So I think we'll be seeing more uh, use cases of our assets. And we have a few interesting things happening on the product side around how do we sort of increase distribution of our assets mm -hmm. and how do we basically make sure that, you know, liquid staking becomes more of a, of a compelling product right. um, in terms of integrating wallets um, and making it much easier around, you know, we call it like, well, obviously abstraction, right? So chain abstraction. Right. Oh, yes. And, uh, and also, uh, you know, abstracting away that people are playing around with liquid staking and they can mm -hmm. just do things via a, a sort of a very easy UI, you know. Right, right, exactly. So a lot of things, man. A lot of yeah, things that's from great. now to the end of the year. You know, <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. We're busy, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're busy. Uh, and so since you are working with now, you are trying to work with uh, Snowbridge, Hyperbridge. So did you already have a plan like, with uh, projects to work together, bring the assets to to Bifrost, to Procnot? Yeah, any idea or any plan on that? Yeah, so I think there's a few things, right? Uh, one of our first liquid staked assets was VEF. So mm. uh, a liquid staked asset on, on, obviously on, on mainnet. Now this, right. this obviously the plan there has always been to move that asset back to Polkadot. Mm -hmm. So we'll have the most native liquid staked version of ETH mm. of Bifrost on, on Polkadot. Mm -hmm. And that will be compelling for people who want to bring in ETH to, to Polkadot, right? And that right. means that I think VETH would be sort of the de facto asset on Polkadot on money markets of hydration mm -hmm. and people who want to have exposure to ETH mm -hmm. in a most like non-custodial decentralized way and get yield, they'll, they'll probably use VETH. Right. Um, in terms of deploying SLPX, which is sort of the remote, remote smart contract palette um, mm -hmm. on these other L2s, as we've done with Manta, uh, A-Star, and so forth, right. we will be deploying that on, on L2s. So we are mm -hmm. focusing on, on, on L2s which have the most usage, you know, TVL, and we think, you know, we've assessed the market on L2s, and we think base is probably the most compelling one for the mm -hmm. time being. In terms right. of distribution, they launched uh, their own wrapped Bitcoin the other day. They saw about mm -hmm. 100 million in TVL inflow in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So I think what we'll be doing is two things, right? We're going to make sure that we keep making sure that VDOT is uh, an important asset within the ecosystem. We want to make sure people stop natively staking right. and doing non-pools mm -hmm. and put their asset to work, mm -hmm. right? While right. securing the network. So I think yes. with hydration going out with their money market right. and their stable coin, mm -hmm. that'll be important. And then with SLPX launching on other L2s, we can tap into the native ecosystem there. So we could work with uh, existing native builders on base on other mm -hmm. L2s and you know, say to them, look guys, we've got our stack there. You can build off uh, games, build up protocols, dApps on top of that. Right. So that's sort of the angle we're taking. And we've also have the, the reward share program, which means mm -hmm. that, you know, the protocol takes about a 10% uh, tax on staking mm -hmm. yield. We mm -hmm. can share that with partners as well. So there's wow. a bit of a, a compelling, there's an alignment there between partners saying, look guys, you can have access to our stack. 
And on top of that, you know, you can also benefit from from the from the volume that's going through it. So I think wow. there's there's a good good incentive alignment there with partners. Oh, that's great. To sort of grow the protocol and, and grow distribution. Right. I really like that. Is there any requirement to join your reward share program? Well, I mean, look, there's no requirement. I mean, the requirement is essentially that um, there, there's a process. You know, you have to go through governance. I mean, mm -hmm. at least push it on, on a discussion forum. The community right. has to be aware of it. You know, the likes mm -hmm. of Staking Rewards, which is a pretty popular staking dashboard. They've applied. Mm -hmm. They've successfully started. Mm -hmm. Talisman, which is obviously native uh, to, to the ecosystem, have also pushed it. Right. We've got a few other uh, wallets also applying. We've got some protocols applying. Mm -hmm. There isn't really a, a requirement. The requirement is, is essentially push your discussion forum, explain to us or explain to the community why, mm -hmm. how right. you're going to do it. Right. You know, mm -hmm. What's the benefit to you guys and to us? Mm -hmm. How much of the commission do you want to take? And then right. the, the fellowship of Bifrost, so sort of the mm -hmm. key contributors to the ecosystem, then we'll vote. Oh, um, I see. And then it goes through. That's interesting. And I mean, the idea here essentially is that if you're a user on a DEX, mm -hmm. rather than having to cross your asset and so forth to Bifrost, you would be able to, depending on, on that partner's like proposal, mm -hmm. you'd be able to maybe mint the assets directly on a UI, oh, rather okay. than moving things left and right and making it quite right. complex. Mm -hmm. And they benefit from it because the user doesn't move. Like, you know, we're not taking yeah. the user away from their UI. Right. And they get revenue from whatever volume is minted. Mm -hmm. And I think the interesting thing there as well is, um, they can then decide how they want to redistribute the commission. You know, mm. They can either re-incentivize it by you know, incentives on their pool or on their product. They can give it to the treasury and then redistribute it as an airdrop. I mean, there's a lot of creative um, you know, opportunity there mm -hmm. for, for partners. So wow, I think that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, what do you think about the ecosystem fund, like deploying DOT into the ecosystem? Yeah. No, I think obviously it's, it was, it's much needed. It's something mm -hmm. I think the ecosystem has been waiting for a while. I think the Web3 Foundation has obviously done, done a very good job there. Fabi has come in and sort of shifted a few things and he's been quite aggressive in, in obviously his, his initiatives, which is great to see with mm -hmm. the decentralized futures and now this ecosystem fund. Right. Uh, I mean, we know for now that obviously Mark spoke yesterday um, that they are going to be sort of the first the VC sort of venture ecosystem fund with also a liquid, liquid, liquid sleeve. Mm -hmm. They've obviously just uh, you know helped and led Hyperbridge's um, you know round, which is good right. to see. Mm -hmm. But in terms of for us, I think I think it's needed. You know, I mean, I think a lot of teams that I've spoken to who are looking to raise, they've had a lot of difficulty raising because right. they they sell that their project is building on Polkadot. And as right. we know, as a VC, you know, your mandate is to generate alpha mm -hmm. for your LPs. Maybe mm -hmm. being associated to Polkadot, unfortunately for these guys, is not positive. Right. So it's good that we have an entity which can help these teams out. Mm -hmm. And then for us, Bifrost specifically, I think the good thing is that we need more liquidity. You know, mm. there's been a, a, unfortunately from, you know, from the hierarchy, from academics at the Web3 Foundation, from maybe parity, there's been a, a resistance for DeFi and potentially the likes of liquid staking because they mm -hmm. think that there's security assumptions, it's, it's whatever. But mm -hmm. if we can have an entity like uh, Skytel's ecosystem fund gradually right. deploy, uh, you know, not aggressively, but in mm -hmm. a, a risk-adjusted way mm -hmm. um, into VDOT and then use primitives and, and drive more liquidity on chain mm -hmm. rather than just parking their money natively. Right. And, and I mean, you're not adding any value there. You're, you're yeah. providing more security than you need. Mm -hmm. You're getting this passive you know, yield, which is quite high compared to others POSs, but mm -hmm. we're not driving any liquidity and on-chain activity. And this is mm -hmm. what the ecosystem is missing. So I think the mandate and the, the decision there has been, is very positive. And I mean, we're going to be looking to work with them very closely to see how they can help the ecosystem there. And I think the lowest hanging fruit would be to, to move some of that dot into VDOT mm -hmm. and then to see what we can do with that VDOT uh, for them. Yeah, yeah I, I think uh, Bifrost already did a quite a good job. You work with high hydration and uh, already bring some actual reward for those VDOT token holders. Yeah, look, I'm going to be quite uh, maybe well, I'm mm. going to be quite realistic, but there's been a few players in the ecosystem that haven't really helped, right? You know, we've been in. I think we've been battle tested. We've proved that um, you know we're, we're people with expertise. Mm -hmm. We do one thing only, and it's liquid staking. Mm -hmm. We've gone through the uh, treasury a few times, asking them for a loan, whether it's on Kusama or in Dot, mm -hmm. you know, to, to try and push the growth of the protocol, push people to using liquid staking. Mm -hmm. We're about 8.5 million Dot now, mm -hmm. maybe 4,000 stakers with VDOT. Mm -hmm. So the idea is really we need to keep working with partners in mm -hmm. the ecosystem which have a shared vision and add value. Hydration has been that, that team, right? They've mm -hmm. got the Omnipool, they've got the Yield DCA, which is a good product. They've got the money market, which is coming out. And we speak to a lot of people and people want to have a money market, right? Right. So um, 
I think this is the key right now, is working with key partners and being quite focused on, on building with these guys. That's great. Yeah. Uh, uh, the next question I want to ask is, uh, uh, what, what do you think would be the most exciting thing for you this year? For myself personally or for Bifrost? Uh, either, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, if, if, dot, if dot goes up, you know, right. <laughs> that would be pretty exciting. You know, okay. you know that's, that's what great. we need. We need dot to go up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, no, I think, look, for, for Bifrost, I think us on our end, it's, we, need a, we need a positive market. Like, mm -hmm. okay, tomorrow there's the Fed, mm -hmm. probably hit rate cuts. That we might see some market uh, you know, fluctuations, but we want to have clarity on the, on the presidency, mm -hmm. clarity on the macro front with you know, uh, monetary policies around the world. We right. want to go into a bull market, you know, we hope, liquidity cycle. We want things to flow, and then we just want to make sure that um, you know mm. our strategy. As I said, is we're on you know, we're a Polkadot app chain, but right. we work with other chains. So yeah. we will deploy on base. We'll work with more developers. So if there's mm. developers watching, you know, reach out to us. You know, we want to work right. with you guys. Mm. And um, I mean, we're pretty much focused on our vision. So I mean, to answer your question, like I'm excited to see sort of how we move forward with Bifrost, mm -hmm. with with base, and work with the uh, Hyperbridge, Snowbridge, and, and a few others. We are looking at Ton as well. Oh, great. Looking at what can be done there because we obviously see that distribution there is big. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and, and I mean, I want Dot to go up, man. Nice. You know, I, think we all do, I, think, I think we all do, you know? We, we all, we exactly. all do that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And BNC as well. We want BNC to go up, man. Yeah. Oh, oh of know? course. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. The last one I can think about, the last question is uh, uh, at Poga Decoded Asia, right? Yeah. Uh, which project you are most interested in connect with like, uh, and why? Yeah, well, I'm connected. We're connected to everybody, to I be know. honest. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're, okay, that's cool. <laughs> I think I think we're, we're we're pretty aggressive on the BD side. We're pretty much connected with everybody in the ecosystem where we think uh, there's value. Nice. Um, we obviously, you know, hydration's not here, but that's that's one thing. Obviously, mm -hmm. on, on the Asia front, you know, we um, we work closely with you know the guys of Sub Wallet. I mean, the teams mm -hmm. which are Asia based, really. Uh, so I think. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I said, we're connected to everyone. Wow, um, that's amazing. So there's nothing Pretty really, good. no one, yeah, no one particular that I have in mind. Um, yeah. It's good to see you though. Good to finally meet. Oh, okay. You know? I think that's my highlight. Okay, my that's highlight, great. Highlight, <laughs> highlight of my Decoded Asia is meeting you in person, oh, mate. Oh, thank you. Finally. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Well, it's uh, so nice, uh, so nice to talk to you. Definitely, Thanks man. Thanks for the time. Thank you for your okay, time. Thanks, thank everybody. You. Thank you. Bye, bye, guys. See you. Bye.